So this happened. <laughs> it's amazing. Thank you all so much, everyone who has subscribed, supported, shared, liked, and helped me get to this 10,000 subscriber milestone. I never even imagined this was possible when I started on this 18 months ago. Plenty more to come. And in honor of this milestone, model driven apps in 10 minutes. I'm going to use the Innovation Challenge app here, which is one of the free sample apps you get with your Dataverse environment if you opt in to get those sample apps when you first set it up. And this is a great use case because it shows bringing in ideas, turning them into projects, linking them back to bigger picture business initiatives. And that's a really nice starting point for thinking about model driven app use case where we've got tables related to each other and we want to be able to track all of those things. What we've got on the front screen here is a dashboard, some nice charts some lists of things that make it easy to see what's going on. And this app has three tables in it. We have challenges, ideas and team projects. We've got a view here and you can configure a view to show whatever columns you want and we can sort and filter by those things as well as doing some advanced find in there. The app itself comes with a heap of things here that you don't have to build. All this native export to Excel, use with Power Automate flows is just there for you, Word templates as well. And as we click through into one of these challenges, you'll see we've got this business process flow across the top. This guides the user through the stages and steps of an end to end process that you've got in your business that you want to track and manage and report on. You'll see we've got different ways of storing information in here. So we've got long pieces of text. We've got the option to have drop downs with multiple boxes that we can tick links to other records in the system, as well as a list of things from a related table. So one challenge has many ideas associated with it and we have this one to many relationship. I can click through on one of those ideas and see the same thing. Another business process flow at the top here. Visibility of that parent challenge record showing through with read only fields. And then the other thing we can do with a business process flow is link things together. So we've gone here from an idea through to a project and the related project record calculated field there will allow you to automatically calculate the budget remaining. And we've got a timeline in the middle. Again, this is an out of the box thing that you just go, yes, please, we'll have that. Tasks, which will connect up with Microsoft To Do and Outlook. Emails that are tracked against Outlook appointments tracked there as well. So all of that completely natively connected to Microsoft 365. So let's have a look at how this is built. I'm in the Power Apps Maker experience. When you've got Dataverse in your environment, you have all of these tables. It comes with a bunch of tables ready for you to use for common things like account, contact, activities, those types of things. You can use them or not. You'll see they're comprehensive, especially account and contact. You can add to them, you can edit them and use them in your app. So you've got that starting point. And then we go ahead and create a solution to start building the assets that we want to build for our own custom application here. I'm creating a new table and the table is called challenge. I start off with a bunch of options and you'll see there's a lot going on here, including auditing, SharePoint integration and saying, yes, please, I'd like this to have activity. That single click creates that timeline that's going on in the middle. Let's have a look at the columns and there's a bunch of stuff that's here already. All this stuff about created on, created by, modified by and so on is setting up all of that kind of ownership and security and permissions, which is very, very deep and allows you to control that at a very granular level. And from there, we start adding columns so we can add text columns, rich text columns. We can add things that are numbers, dates and times, all sorts of different things. And this is all just a point and click interface to go through and create all of these things. And they're just being added into that data table alongside all of those other things that were there to start with. As well as all of those date and time and text and number type columns, we've got the ability to work with choices where we can create a drop down list of something and we can also allow multiple choices to be selected. This allows us to set something up that we can use in multiple places. So something like this, what's the communication preference, email, Teams, phone, we might want to use over and over again so we can create it once and reuse it multiple times in our app. We can also add some little color codes in here with hex colors or just browsing the thing so that when we start to view these things in a list, we've got some nice colors associated with them for additional visual appeal. So we set that one up, add that to our table, and we're good to go. The next thing we're going to do is create another table and then link them together. So we navigate back here. We're going to create the ideas table this time. We go in again, choose the options that we want from all of those advanced things. So we'll set this up so this one can also have that timeline of activities in it. And we'll add another column type here just to show you a little bit more of a variety. 
currency. Now, obviously, there's a lot of work in building this out, but you can go as complex as you want, as many tables as you want, different things. And we're going to link these together by creating what's called a lookup column from the idea back to that originating challenge. And we just do that simple as that. That has created a relationship between those two tables. We can see it here in the relationships that it exists and it's done all of that work behind the scenes and giving it a schema name and so on. You can actually also create relationships here, one to many, many to one and many to many automatically out of the box. The many to many is done for you. You don't have to do a whole lot of work with the intersecting table in there. Let's have a look at some other components. Now, once we've got our data model in shape, we build out the app components. So the first thing we do here is we build a view. This is what we saw at the start with the filtering and the list of things. So this is just drag and drop to bring those things in. And we can also add and edit filters and sorting order so that it comes up filtered by certain things. You might want to only see things over an investment of $10,000. We can save that go back into our main navigation menu again and this time what we're going to do is create what's called a form which is when we open that challenge record defining what we see on the screen here. This is also drag and drop you'll see this is the skeleton of the thing but we've got the ability to go in here and add different kinds of columns and headings and things on the page so we've added a heading to the summary column there. Let's reset this whole thing so that it's three columns wide so you can have one two or three columns You'll see the timeline is already there because we checked that box earlier. And then I'm setting up a spot to bring in those related ideas. Click through and have a look at all of the available columns. And again, just a click and point, drag and drop. That one was a rich text column for uh, the description. So that's just there as rich text. I can drag things up into the header so that they persist in that top right hand corner of the user interface. And now I'm going to bring in my related table of ideas. So I go back and choose the component to bring in what's called a subgrid, choose the related records and find that table that I created earlier. And simple as that, boom, that's done. There's a lot more you can do here. You can bring in additional UI elements. You can really kind of add extra tabs and all sorts of things to the page, but it's all that same kind of drag and drop experience to get that done. Now what we're going to do is add a business process flow, that thing across the top that takes you through from the end to end of the stages and steps of the process. We give it a name and we tell it which table it's going to be related to. And again, nice easy drag and drop. We're going to define those steps and stages. So we work through from start to finish what are the different things we need. So part of our challenge is here we're going from a setup through to track and so on throughout. And you can add as many different stages as you like under here you can have conditional branching as well so that you could say if something's true or not true you bring those things in and the process can branch off and you can have different processes for different reasons we bring in our data steps under here so we'll just grab one of these as an example to show you but you would typically add more and you would do that across all of those stages there when it's done we save we activate that and it is ready to be added to our app so we've got a data model, we've got forms, we've got views. Now this is the process of building the model driven app. It's this easy, new model driven app. We give it a name. Remember, you haven't seen me code anything with Excel or anything yet, have you? I can bring in those tables, dashboard, custom pages, check out my other video on that. And then I choose the table or tables that I want to bring in. I'm just going to do them one at a time. So you see this twice. There we go. There's my challenge table. I'm also going to bring in that ideas table and you'll see it's adding it to the menu because I'm keeping that show in navigation box checked. Starting to come together now. Group one isn't terribly useful. Let's give that a name so we can use this to rename the navigation. We can structure this and drag and drop those things around into the right order that we want to see in there. And then we just need to add our business process flow in there that we've created as well. Save. That's it. I've just created an app. That wasn't very long at all. Publish the customizations and let's have a look at what we've got here. Now, this is a very simplified version of what we had at the start. We navigate back into that main menu and I can open the app. All of those things about Flow and Excel are just there from saying new model driven app. Create a new challenge and I've got that process flow ready to go across the top. Start to enter my data in there. And this would be the experience for the user of doing that data entry in the app. Once I've saved that, I've got access to all the related things here so I can go in and create those activities or we can connect this up to be natively synced with Outlook and I can go ahead and create related ideas and they will sit in there as well. So there you go, model driven apps in under 10 minutes. Check out my full tutorial if you want to learn how to do this yourself. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing.